Hello and welcome back. So in the last episode we added a blood splatter effect. Um, I was I went back into play mode after the episode ended and I noticed that one of our spawn points is actually off the nav mesh. And so by chance um, it created the monster off the nav mesh and then he, he tried to run toward the nav mesh and got stuck. So he, now he's just like inside this rock. Um, so leave play mode and make sure that all the Spawn points are actually on the nav mesh, like that. Yep, that looks better. Save the scene one more time. And I'm going to turn my light back on. And I think I want to play with the blood spatter just a little bit more. Uh, I feel like there's still too much blood coming out. Uh, and also... It's coming out at a pretty wide range. Well, we want it to be centered around the hit, but but it, it it seems like it's it's coming out in a pretty wide like if if you hit here, it's coming out in a pretty wide sphere. So let's just change this to something much smaller, like point one. And now go back into play mode one more time just to see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's looking better. Alright, now we want to continue working on this scene. Um, it's kind of boring at the moment. Um, I like the variation of textures, but I don't like the height map at all. And I think we should also consider creating a second terrain just to make the map much larger, because it, it's pretty small at the moment. So to start on that, I'm actually going to flatten out this height map by clicking on terrain. And if you go into the second tab, you can click Flatten. And I'm just going to repaint everything green. Max brush size, max opacity, repaint. Like that. All right. And now I'm going to create a second terrain. This one's at minus 250, minus 250. Um, so I'm going to right click on environment, 3D object, whoops, 3D object and terrain. And I want this one sort of out here. You know, I changed my mind. Uh, when we're in play mode, the, the moon is like up in this direction, so the player is probably going to run that way. People usually move toward light. So, put this over here, and now it's at minus 251, minus 470, so we're going to round that off. 250, and 700, 750, there we go. So now we have two trains that... Um, share a border add texture grass add all right and these look different that's because we we edited the grass texture to have um, five units per texture all right and now we there's going to be a problem where when we change the height on one it it makes a tear in our mesh and so um I don't really have a good solution for that I I've looked into trying to stitch these together and there's just there's no good free solution unless you have unless you want to write all the code yourself um which, which is a little bit outside the scope of this project so what we're going to do is keep this flat the whole way down and just have like other things to keep the scene interesting in this spot. What like we could have mountains here, mountains here, mountains around here. Um but but to box to box the player in we'll have like fences here. Um but I just want to keep this completely flat for the sake of making sure there's no breaks in the seam. 
All right. So now, also to also to add some variety to this, I went to the Unity Asset Store and I found some scene assets that are free. We have this stone fence, medieval fence pack, uh, Yuhu free concrete pipes, magic idol, and horse statue. I think this one's gonna look awesome in the dark, so I'm gonna import that one first. And I want to change the name of this to Terrain 2. Download Horse Statue. And we're probably going to have to reposition all these spawn points. Um, but for now, I think they're fine. Whoops. And actually, I think I'm going to set all their heights to 1. Alright, so now this is almost finished downloading. Import. Ah, I hit cancel. Well, that was a waste of time. Alright, so now import that. Go back into the scene view. And horse statue, drop that in imported. Models. There's a few different options. Uh, I'll just take this one. And apparently it's ridiculously massive. a waste of time. Alright, so let's put this over by the player. And I think we could do something like this for like an Easter egg. Maybe maybe when the player finds it they, they get a bunch of bonus points. I just think it'll look cool in the dark. It's, it's currently floating above the ground, so make sure you drop that down. And let's turn out the lights again. Very cool. And you'll notice the player can run through it, so we need to make sure we add a collider to this. I'll just use a simple box collider. And maybe a capsule collider as well. Uh, height 100. And the scaling is all weird because we had to scale it down so much in the transform. 0, 200, 300. 500. Sometimes you just have to play with it. Alright, that seems close enough. And now we want to make sure we mark that as static. And um, just for fun, let's go ahead and rebake the nav mesh. I always think this nav mesh view looks so cool. Alright, so now go back into play mode. Bullets get deflected. You can't run through it anymore. Uh oh. My gun broke. That was weird. Alright, and I got killed. So I think we're making good progress. Um, I think I'm going to bring the ground up to meet these rocks. And let's make sure that direction light comes back on. It's so hard to work on the scene when it's pitch black, pitch black like that. Alright, so brush size, opacity, something like that. Oops.
And the more interesting the train is, the easier it'll be for the player to find things and like navigate around in the future. I'm going to keep it fairly flat around the spawn points. Alright, and where did that seam go? I guess it's all the way out there. And I don't really have a system for um, painting height maps. I just sort of do whatever I feel like doing. It's all part of the fun, though. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Not bad. I think already it's looking much more realistic. All right. So the next thing I want to do is bring in a fence. Uh, I think I'll take this one. And we're going to use this to box the player in. We we don't want the player to be able to run to the edge of the map and see the like the abyss on the edge. So we're going to box the player in and then create um maybe other terrains or uh, meshes to make it look like the landscape stretches onward. Okay, so I just brought in this stone fence back. I'm going to click on import. And you can see that here. So I'm just going to drag that onto imported. Also, I just noticed that I have these weird folders down here called tree textures and I think that um, I think those are useless to us those probably aren't in your project that was just for me experimenting with grass all right so now that I cleaned up the project window and we have our fences let's go ahead and start fencing off the player imported stone fence prefabs and let's see what kind of options we have. We have a post, a different post, a fence, and a different fence. Alright, so I want to keep it as high resolution as possible, so I'm just going to use the LOD um, I think this one actually looks the best. This one has the most geometry in it. Uh, so I think I'll use that one. So I'm going to use LOD0 for both the post and the fence. And um, by default, they're pretty short. But let, let's just start connecting these and see how, how it looks. And after we have a few, we can start um, creating larger prefabs. I'm going to take all this and put it on an, on an empty game object. So we have this empty game object here. And um, to position it correctly, I just I added it at the center of this object. And then I took it off that object, and I'm going to use it as the root for the fence. So we'll call this uh, six part fence or something. Fence length three. That'll work. And I'm just going to take all these and drag it onto there. 
and then put this down in this folder. So now we can just extend the fence by going like this. And actually, I want to make sure that the uh, sorry, I'm right. Yeah, that'll work. So what I just did is moved everything over relative to the root. So now when I drag this on, um, it's a little bit easier to position. All right. So now let's run over and see what that looks like. Not actually sure what direction it's in. Uh, let, let's let's also bring that to the player so they don't have to run the whole distance. Just just for testing it out. All right, so here's our fence, and it's a little bit too short because we can still jump over it. Oh yikes! So let's go ahead and make that a little bit larger. So I'm going to go back to working on just one prefab. Scale that up. And I think I'll just, I'll use the uniform scale. I really like the way it looks. I don't want it to to end up looking stretched. All right, so now I'm going to apply that, and at the same time, I'm going to go into FPS controller, first person controller, and change the jump speed to 7. They don't need to jump quite so high. All right, so now the fence successfully locks us in, but now I feel like it looks too high, so go back to here. Set this to like 1.2. There. Ah. And let's see what it looks like at night. It's pretty good. I like it. Let me go. Ah. All right. So I turn the light back on, and let's just box in the player the whole way around. Usually the more screen space you have for your scene view, the easier it is to build the scene. Alright, and you'll notice that the scale on this one is messed up. So go back to this one and make sure you click apply. And I want to move all of these over to like here. And we're going to need to be careful because we don't want the ground to be too high near the fence because the player could jump over the fence and get outside the map. And and if that happens, it's really going to d destroy the illusion of the game.
set this to 270, drag it down, and we have some spawn points outside the walkable terrain, so let's just bring those in. Uh, I'm going to, what's going on here? Oh yeah, so I'm going to put some more trees out here. Because we want it to look like the map stretches on for a while. And another thing we can do is uh, increase the height over here. And that way it won't seem like the player is just looking off into nothing. Because they'll, they'll understand that their, their field of view is obstructed by something. Alright, so I also want to um, drop the train down like that. Undo. Flatten it out. And just to keep these somewhat organized, I'm going to try to put them within parent folders. Alright, so that's that's one wall, so I'm just going to put that on an empty game object. Create empty. Uh-oh. I messed something up. So, go back, create empty, here, giant stone wall, All right, and now we can just duplicate that entire thing. Like so. Flatten out the ground here. And we might as well duplicate it one more time. Rotate it by 270. And drag it over. Like so. And that tree ended up right on the fence. So to remove trees, you can go into the tree tab, hold shift, and click. And we'll just sort of replace them. Now uh, duplicate the giant stone wall one more time. Move it over, duplicate, move it over, and there's just lots of tweaking here. Um, I know this is probably pretty boring to watch, but I'm going to be doing the exact same thing in the next video, because we want to we want to keep making the map as interesting as possible, and it it's just going to take time. Uh, I want to rotate this like that. 
And you can hold control and spin to, to do the snap rotation. All right. Um, I hope you guys aren't losing your mind with boredom yet. And also, if you do think this is boring, um, feel free to just download my finished version from the GitHub file. Um, that way, I can save you guys some work. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is drop all of these into a folder, and then I'll cut this video off because we're running pretty long. So I'm just going to call this folder Fences. Reset the position and take all of these and drop them on fences. And we'll put that on map center. And um, for now, I'm just going to drag, I'm going to rename this horse statue, and I'll drag that into my prefabs folder. And then we can delete the object out of the scene. Alright, so I think that'll be good for now. Um, thank you guys for watching, and have a great night.